Hello guys, welcome to another integral video. Today we're going to be taking a look at this amazing integral, the integral from 0 to infinity of e to the negative x sine of x ln x dx. So let's jump right into it. Now the first thing I thought of when I saw this integral was we have the integral from 0 to infinity of e to the negative x sine of x ln x is I thought of um, grouping this function here and then just taking the Laplace transform of sine of x times ln x and then evaluating it at s equals 1. And that would work, but unfortunately we don't have an easy way of evaluating the Laplace transform of sine of x ln x. So what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to figure out how to um, simplify sine of x and sort of include it in, uh, so we only have to take the Laplace transform of ln x. So the way we're going to do that is we know that the imaginary part of e to the i x equals sine of x. So basically what we're going to do is we're going to take the imaginary part of this whole integral and we're going to do e to the negative x, e to the i x ln x dx. And then what we can do is we can um, combine those exponents and we're going to end up with the integral of e to the negative 1 minus i x ln x dx. So now what we have is the Laplace transform of ln x, or I should say ln t, I suppose that's more accurate, evaluated at s equals 1 minus i. So all we have to do is uh, figure out what the Laplace transform of ln t is, and then plug that into our formula, and then take the imaginary part. So I'll get imaginary part right here. So the first thing we have to do is uh, we're just going to directly use the formula um, to evaluate the Laplace transform of ln x. So in general, we're going to have the integral from 0 to infinity of e to the negative st ln t dt. Now what I want to do here is I want to end up with this just being e to the negative u. So that means I'm going to say that st equals u, or t equals u over s, dt equals du over s. And what we're going to end up with is, um, assuming that s is real, we have the integral from 0 to infinity of e to the negative u, ln u over s. And then I'm going to bring the 1 over s out here, du. OK. Now what we're going to do is we're going to split this ln up into ln u minus ln s. So what that's going to look like is we're going to have now 1 over s times the integral from 0 to infinity of e to the negative u ln u du minus the integral from 0 to infinity of e to the negative u ln s du. Now this first part, this is a very famous integral. And this evaluates to negative gamma, where gamma is the euler mascheroni constant. I can't pronounce it for the life of me. I'm so sorry. Um, I want to say euler mascheroni. Mascheroni? I don't know. OK, so this first part is just going to be negative gamma over s. And the second part, um, s is constant with respect to u. So this is just this part is just going to go to, oh, I forgot the factor of ln, 1 over s here. This is just going to end up being negative ln s because the integral from 0 to infinity of e to the negative u is just 1. So this is the Laplace transform of ln t. And so what we're going to do is we're going to plug in um, s equals 1 minus i. And I'm just going to go to the next slide for some space. So remember that our integral i is equal to the imaginary part of the Laplace transform of ln t evaluated at s equals 1 minus i. And so all we have to do is plug in the formula that we had before. So this is going to be the imaginary part of negative gamma over 1 minus i minus natural log of 1 minus i all over 1 minus i. So on the inside here, we're just going to multiply by 1 plus i everywhere on the top and bottom of both just to, um, whatchamacallit, uh, we're, we're multiplying the conjugate to get this all into real form on the bottom. So we're going to have negative gamma plus gamma i 
over, uh, so 1 minus i times 1 plus i, what that's going to end up being is just um, 1 squared minus i squared, which is just 2. Then we're going to subtract ln 1 minus i. We can actually write this. If we picture 1 minus i in the complex plane, that's going to be over here and then down here. We have a length of 1, 1, so this is the length of square root 2. So it's going to be ln square root 2 plus i, or I'm sorry, uh, minus i pi over 4. Because that's our angle here. This is negative pi over 4. So we can write this as ln square root 2, or 1 half square root 2, whatever you want to do there, minus i pi over 4 times 1 plus i all over 2. Okay, now we're just going to, so this part is going to disappear because it's not imaginary. And so we're going to have just um, gamma over 2 uh, plus the imaginary part of this whole thing right here, which is negative. So we're going to just foil this out ln square root 2 minus i ln square root 2 minus i pi over 4 plus pi over 4 all over 2. So we don't care about the real part. We only care about the imaginary part. So this is going to end up being gamma over 2. Oh, I'm sorry. I did make a mistake back here. We're supposed to be multiplying by 1 plus i on the top and bottom, so this is actually a negative sign. I forgot about that. I'm so sorry. Okay, so we have the imaginary part of this. So that's just going to be, in this case, uh, we have... Okay, I'm sorry, I made another mistake here. This negative sign combines with this negative sign, so this is actually positive i pi over 4. So we have the imaginary part of this. This is just going to be minus ln square root 2 over 2, and then we have plus pi over 8. So that's actually kind of a crazy solution from, um, I don't want to say relatively simple integral, but relatively uncomplicated integral. We get something with pi in it, with natural log of 2 in it, and with gamma in it. So uh, that's the result for this amazing integral. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you found it uh, interesting and entertaining. Now, one thing that I do want to mention, somewhere in this video, I made an assumption and then I violated that assumption. And in this case, it actually doesn't matter because um, for this integral, you can go check on Wolfram Alpha, it, it evaluates to the same thing. But I made an assumption that I probably shouldn't have made, which has to do with the Laplace transform. And so I want you to go back and see if you can go and find what I assumed here that I then violated. I mean, it's something that generally will just end up working out, even though I made the false assumption. But I do think that it's a good practice to go back and see, well, what did I have to assume here that ended up not working? So that's our answer. I hope you enjoyed the video, and I'll see you in the next one.